Hey everybody, it's Corey. Thanks for joining me. So I have a confession to make. I am a huge NASCAR fan. Growing up as a young boy, my dad was a race car mechanic and we spent our Saturday nights on a small um, third mile racetrack in Saugus, California called Saugus Speedway. And as a young boy, I really could care less about the battles on the racetrack. I could care less about the strategies and the battles in the pits. What I was waiting for was the crash. And that's how I feel people are right now when it comes to the current real estate market, both at the national level and here in North Idaho. Everybody is waiting for the crash. There is no shortage of legacy media channel, social media personalities, local newspapers, using sexy tag words like crash, boom, bubble, crisis to get our attention. If it bleeds, it leads, right? Unfortunately, while everyone has been waiting for a housing crash similar to the one we saw during the Great Recession of the late 2000s, a housing crash of a different kind has slowly snaked its way around us like a huge boa constrictor. We are in a housing crash right now. It is just a different housing crash than the one everybody's been waiting for. While everybody has been waiting for housing prices to crash, we've neglected to see that the housing supply has crashed. When people reference the last housing crash of the late 2000s, they say this, I remember when people could not afford to keep their homes. When they reference the current housing crash that we're in now, in the future they're gonna say this, I remember when people couldn't afford to buy a home. Nationally, we are in a crippling and suffocating housing crash that is completely different than the one that we saw in 2007. In this video, we will break down the current housing crash that we're in. We'll look at both the national housing market and the North Idaho housing market. And at the end of the video, I'll give you my prediction for what I think is coming in 2022. Okay, let's break down the current housing crash. One sentence sums it up. There is nothing to buy. Whereas there was a record oversupply of homes during the last housing crisis, in 2022, there is a historic undersupply of homes. Several factors have contributed to this steady crash in the supply of homes. The first is that millennial demand is up. The bulk of the new demand for homes can be attributed to the largest generation, the millennial generation, which has entered the marketplace over the past decade. Millennials, those 26 to 41 years of age, make up more than half of all home purchases and have done so for five years running. Second contributing factor to the undersupply of homes is that white collar demand for second homes is up. An article from Barron's puts it this way, second homes are driving the U.S. COVID-19 housing boom. Before the pandemic, demand for second and primary homes had been growing at similar rates. But since, interest rates in second homes has grown twice as fast as for primary homes. The article says the surge in second home buying underscores how affluent Americans, whose white-collar jobs have allowed them to work and school their children from home, have chosen to ride out the pandemic outside of dense urban centers and in homes with more space and amenities. Additionally, since the late 2000s, the popularity and accessibility of vacation homes through sites like Airbnb and VRBO has made vacation homes a popular investment as well. Third reason that we're seeing an incredible low supply of homes is there's a, an increased demand by institutional investors in the single family home market. Much has been made public recently on how insurance companies, banks, pension funds, and iBuyers have increased their investments into the single family home market. Real estate is seen as the ultimate hard asset in which investors seek safe haven during high inflationary times. And within the real estate sphere, single family homes are the gold standard, especially with more and more people working from home and commercial real estate becoming less popular. So those are three of the more significant reasons that demand has increased over the past decade. That demand has resulted in a 63% increase of homes sold since 2008. The number of buyers increasing is enough to strain the housing market by itself. However, the amount of homes being built has steadily decreased during the same period. The U.S. Census reported that from January uh, 2012 to June 2021, 12.3 American households were started, but just 7 million new single family homes were constructed during that time. So another contributing factor to the huge undersupply of homes is that builders simply have not been able to keep up with the demand. 
In fact, over the past decade, the nation has fallen short 5 million homes of undersupply. And expecting builders to double their production with the headwinds that they're facing right now and going into the future is unrealistic. Some of those unprecedented headwinds include a decreasing and more expensive labor force, material and appliance shortages, increasing regulations, increasing and volatile cost of materials, and shrinking land inventory, which has historically high prices. Another factor that gets very little attention as to why we see an undersupply of homes in the nation is the fact that people are staying in their homes longer. That's called housing tenure, and housing tenure is actually up. The amount of time people stay in their homes has increased with people staying in their homes three years longer than they did in 2008. Many homeowners fear selling their homes only to jump into a housing market where there is limited inventory, resulting in bidding wars and all-time high prices. Other homeowners having strong equity in their homes have taken advantage of the low interest rates, refinanced their home, they take that cash and then they turn their home into what they desire. So if, for instance, they might add another bedroom, they might add an outdoor living space or maybe a third car garage. And that creates the home that they want rather than selling their home and hoping to find a different home out on the market that meets their needs. So remember that boa constrictor that we talked about that's called housing undersupply? Well, it has two heads. The first head is higher demand and the second is lower supply. Now, when we put both the housing supply and housing demand charts together, it is amazing to see the increasing gap between demand and supply widen. To fully understand the chaos that is created when you increase demand and at the same time decrease supply, we kind of got to go back to that childhood game we used to play called musical chairs. It works like this. And that's where we're at in the nation as a whole right now as far as the real estate market goes. There are too many people chasing too few homes and as a result, prices go up. And as a result of those prices going up, more and more buyers are being pushed out of the market. And this housing crisis that we're experiencing as a whole in the nation only intensifies in more popular real estate markets. Here is the U.S. Census list of the states that had the fastest growth rates in 2021. Notice it was Idaho, Utah, Montana, Arizona, South Carolina, Delaware, Texas, Florida, Nevada, and South Dakota. And as demand intensifies in these more popular areas, it only creates more pressure, increasing the prices. Here is a list of the states that saw the highest real estate price appreciation in 2021. Notice the states that saw the highest appreciation of real estate prices in 2021 are for the most part, the same states that saw the highest rates of population growth. Idaho hovers at the top of both lists, but it is not alone in the handful of popular states seeing growth and real estate price appreciation. If we want to live somewhere favorable, chances are many others do as well. And as a result of that increased demand, the price to buy real estate is going up in all of them. I want to actually show you the housing uh, statistic numbers for 2021 for both the national housing market and for North Idaho. In this chart here, we see demand for buyers, which is determined by closed sales, was up 9% for the nation as a whole and down 5% for the North Idaho market. While we notice that sales went down 5% for the North Idaho market, we must be very cautious about making predictions that the North Idaho market is actually slowing down. Now remember economic principle number one, price is determined by the dynamics between supply and demand. In this chart, we see the supply of homes was down 14% for the nation as a whole and down 27% for the North Idaho market in 2021. So when we say the sale of homes needs to be relative to the supply of homes, this is what we're talking about. So here's your rubber band. This is a balanced market in real estate. And when you have higher uh, demand, then you have supply, which is what we have, high demand, low supply. That tension creates more prices. Well, last year in North Idaho, we saw that the sale of homes went down 5%, but 
the supply of those homes went away 27%. And what just happened? The tension increased, thereby driving the prices higher. In the national market, we saw a 9% increase in demand and a 14% decrease in supply. That's increased tension, thereby driving those prices up. In this chart, we see the median price, or equity gain, was up 16% for the nation as a whole and up 33% for the North Idaho market. That jump in prices for 2021 resulted in a median price of $358,000 for the nation as a whole and $480,000 for the North Idaho market. Now, I wanna take you behind the curtain and talk a little bit about this decrease in home sales that happened in the summer of 2021 here in the North Idaho market. Notice that in July, there was a notable shift downward in closed sales that remained stagnant for the second half of the year, making it the first year since 2008 that did not trend up. We need to ask why. Was it because the inventory was so low? Low inventory is certainly a contributing factor, but if we look again, we notice overall inventory was actually up year over year for the second half of the year. When we go back to the month to month median prices, we notice that July was the first month that pre-existing homes saw a median price over $500,000. The July median price was 515,000. That was $115,000 more than just six months earlier. For the rest of the year, median prices hovered at or near $500,000 and basically stayed there. I believe that was the collective voice of North Idaho buyers saying no to prices at or above $500,000 for a median priced home. In my conversations with buyers last year, I noticed a considerable resistance to that $500,000 price point. Now, many expect to spend around $500,000 for a nice home with property. But when I explain to buyers that that $500,000 median price point here in North Idaho does not include land, it is simply a nice house in a nice neighborhood, they're shocked. When prices were $350,000 or $400,000 for the median price home, Everybody was in, most people can afford that. But as soon as you hit that 500 price point, it seems to el eliminate a lot of your demand. However, we're one month into 2022 and we are already seeing the price wars, the bidding wars that we saw in 2021. Now granted, they're, they're not as voluminous. So in 2020 and 2021, we were seeing anywhere from 10, sometimes 30 multiple bids on homes. Here in January, those are more like three to five multiple bids on a home at that 500,000 price point. So while the demand is decreasing, it's not decreasing enough to keep the prices from going up. Okay, Corey, how much? How much do you see prices going up there in North Idaho for 2022? So Lawrence Young is the chief economist for the National Association of Realtors. And this is what he predicts for the national market for 2022. He expects existing home sales to slow slightly in the coming months due to higher mortgage rates. He forecasts rates to remain below 4% by year end and wages to hold firm due to a tighter labor market. He says, this year consumers should prepare to endure some increases in mortgage rates. I also expect home prices to grow more moderately by 3 to 5% in 2022, and then similarly in 2023 as more supply reaches the market. Data consistently shows that the North Idaho market tracks the national market only at intensified levels. So if Lawrence Young is predicting a 3 to 5% increase at the national level, I think it's safe to say that the North Idaho market can expect to see at least a 3 to 5% increase in prices. And because we typically are twice the intensity, twice the price rise, we may even see as much as uh, 6 to 10% uh, price increases going forward into 2022. So in review, we are in a national housing crisis right now. It's an affordability crisis caused by too many people chasing too few homes. And that crisis only intensifies in popular markets like North Idaho. Those of you looking to purchase here in North Idaho in the near future, you should still expect to see demand and competition for homes. You should also expect to see low inventory. There's not a lot of homes to look at. And because of that tension between supply and demand, 
you should expect price increases. And like we talked about, we should expect somewhere between 3% and 10% price increases, especially for the more popular homes in more popular neighborhoods. So there you have it. That's the national and North Idaho housing market going forward into 2022. If you'd like more information on the North Idaho housing market, we'd love to talk with you. You can reach us at livebetterinnorthidaho.com. Thanks for watching.